Lucy, why, Lucy, why? Why? All right, y'all, we're just gonna get into this because I got a lot going on. So y'all know I put the 19s on, car's low. It did the thing with the thing and it ate the cable. This is to the hood. I was driving and I hit a bump going into work and it popped my hood. Obviously I was confused. And right now this doesn't work through the driver's side. It works through here. I got to pull it here and it opens it. So now I've got to cut this stuff, all this braided wire that's around it. And then I got to also figure out what's going on with these wires because I lost my signals and I'm pretty sure that has something to do with it. Granted, I tucked everything else. So once I fix these, technically it should work, but we're crossing our fingers right now. And yeah, I'm just gonna get into it, y'all. So I told you about the rubbing. <laughs> That's all metal from the tire rubbing. It's all exposed metal now. <laughs> I kept, you know, full lock and then it rubs there and it rubbed through the paint. So I definitely need spacers, especially because I'm gonna have to do full tilt when I'm doing the angle kit and I'm gonna need the space. So I think I'm gonna need like an inch spacer, bro. So I was trying to be lazy. I was gonna put the 18s on as you can see, cause I know those work, but I know that it was bottoming out even with the 18s. So I'm actually gonna sit here. I'm gonna raise the coil overs. I'm gonna try to get the height right. I think I'm still gonna run the 18s because I know they bottom out with that. So I should be able to bottom it out with the 18s. See if it's still bottom out. If it's bottom out with the 18s, that means that it's still too low. Cross your fingers for me, hope that this works. I don't feel like doing this right now. I'm also worried that the coilover is not gonna go up much more. I need to get the stiffer springs so that it'll sit stiffer, it'll sit higher. And hopefully that will solve my problem. I kind of cleaned this up a little bit. Uh, I don't have the wires all over the place. I kind of have to figure out where it is in the car and then pull it through so that it's not hanging anymore and tape it up. The 19s were bottoming out a lot. I didn't even, I did notice before that they was had a score in them. You see there's a little score here and that's from the fender. So I'm, I'm gonna have to hammer these out. If you look here, there's like metal right here. I gotta hammer those out so that they're flat so that it stops bottoming it out on that. And then I will figure this out tomorrow, which you guys will see in the next clip. I'm not figuring it out today. Hopefully this fixes my blinker issue because I need my blinkers, man. If not, I'm gonna be wiring them in manually or something and just doing my own style stuff. And I really, really don't wanna do that because it's not the proper way to do it. Wish me luck. I'm gonna raise these up and then we'll get into the next clip tomorrow of me hopefully putting in something else. You know what? I'm just gonna show you guys now. Now, some of you may know what this is as soon as I show you, some of you may not. This is exciting. This is why I'm trying to get everything sorted out. I do have to order spacers regardless to get this to fit. Oh, you know what, let me show you the other one. But this might give you an idea. The other one's already opened. So, if you don't know what this is, it is for the angle. This is an angle kit. So this bolts into the inner tie rod. This goes to under the knuckle. I can actually show you here. So it goes in like that. So it'll go in, this, this piece will go in between here. This will bolt into that. And then there's this piece that will go into the side of the arm so that it doesn't come out. Thread, thread locker all around, and then that will allow these arms to move more this way because it'll change the axis point at which it is moving the knuckle. Then we can start doing more drift stuff. This is a fun car. I know this is an odd thing for this car because we have 19s on it. It's not exactly a drift build, but I want it to at least be able to do the cool stuff. Is it really gonna be completely dialed in for drifting? No. That is why I still have full interior. That's why the car is slow. That's why it's gripping up. That's why it's not doing drift stuff, but it will at least allow it to not spin out. It will allow it to do a lot more. It'll make it do more close proximity stuff. We'll get into it when we get into it. But for now, I'm gonna try to overnight some 25 mil spacers so that I can fit those on there, which then I'm gonna have to figure out how it's gonna fit here because it's gonna touch here. I know that it might touch here. I might have to cut the front bumper. These are our problems for tomorrow. Anyways, let me get back to raising these and then we will get into that. Let me get into that. So 
So I just want to chat about this real quick. I do not stress this enough. I do not use a spanner. I literally use this. I hit the edges, it comes loose, and then I can literally spin it by hand. If you did not prep your coil overs properly with any seeds or something to make sure that it does not rust, then that is your issue with your coilovers. But you should need a spanner wrench to spin your coilovers. I literally crack these loose, spun the whole coilover by hand, and then I literally tighten the spanner ring right back down, and then use the hammer to tighten it back up. These things are mint. So I mean, I'm, I'm really satisfied with these coilovers, especially for 250, I think. I think it might've been less than that, so yeah. Just wanted to point that out. I'm about to put the wheel back on now. Something else I didn't t show you guys, I'll show you guys in a second, is there's even metal exposed. I might have showed you guys. There's metal exposed from the tire rubbing. So now I'm going to attempt to tuck the engine wire or the, the hood wire, hood cable, and then I might try to tuck these airbag wires. I'm assuming that's what's throwing off everything else as far as the blinkers because I don't know why else my blinkers wouldn't work. I'm hoping that now that I kind of sorted everything, maybe they'll turn on, but I doubt it. So I gotta chase the blinkers again. I still haven't figured out the passenger rear, so I guess I can do that now, but I might have to just wire in my own way and set it up to the, the actual, but the piece in the steering column that makes the blanket turn on. I'm about to put the wheels back on. Like I said, I'm gonna to tuck to the other side and then hopefully this fits a decent height up. I know, we like the wheel tuck. I honestly don't care for the wheel tuck. I actually like the full wheel being exposed because I like the drift style look where you can see the full wheel and I actually want it to poke. It's not that I really want it to poke, but I just, I mean, it is, I like that look. But also, if it's poking, that means that it cannot be tucking wheel because if it tucks wheel, it's going to bend this fender. I think I still might bend the fender now if I put the spacers on. I guess we'll just have to find out. I might have to cut the inner part in, but I'm afraid that if I cut the inner part in, it's gonna make it less structural and be more likely to bend the fender. Uh, I'm just yapping away. So let me go check the other side, put these rims on and then put the car back down and see where it's at. And then fingers crossed that it doesn't settle anymore and that it sits where it needs to sit. And then I can do the full lock and all that. Still pretty low if I'm being honest. I'm worried I'm still gonna touch a little bit with pressure and everything, but I won't know until I actually get on it. This size is higher, this size is always higher because it has less weight on it. I did raise that one slightly higher to try to give it some more leeway. These are sitting where I want them to in the back, which is good. I thought they were gonna go lower because I raised the front, but they didn't. So right now we should be at a decent spot. I'm gonna drive the car hard and then you guys will hear me in the next clip talking about if it's good or not. Currently at the gas station filling up. No rubbing, which is great. I just dogged it. I put it to the wall. Obviously it's only been today. It's only been 30 minutes, but I did drive the car really, really hard in the curves. I got it to really uh, compress. It didn't bottom out. It did when I hit a bump, but that was it. Other than that, everything stood where it needed to and I'm not getting no rubbing, so I'm satisfied. But, I mean, we're subject to see, give it a week or so, let it settle in, and then it might come back down. 
but yes i'm gonna try to get the spacers by hopefully the day tomorrow or after like a thursday and then we'll try to put those on and hopefully be able to put on the angle kit so that the things go lock to lock and if we're lucky we'll find a spot to go do some stuff and actually be able to let it rip but i don't know i'm not gonna make any promises on that but i am gonna try to get the angle kit on this week i do have something for y'all this week that's a surprise it's not mine but it's cool and we're about to get a cold start so i know i got all that other boring stuff i brought this to show the person that owns it you guys already know this guy i'll give you a little hint you know that one right you got this all right give us give us a cold start my guy where's the exhaust is there no exhaust oh i see it it's a little downpipe Ah, it's stock, baby. You ain't got it. You ain't got no sound. It sounds nice and smooth. Nice LS400. Hold up. Give me some res when I get up front so I get some valve train. Go ahead. Yeah, I know y'all hear that induction noise. Yeah, this thing's sick, man. It's super clean. What is it, 300K? Yeah, 289K. Interior is mint, bro, I'm jealous. Interior is black and mint. I'm not trying to find, find nothing out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. It's good find. It sounds really good. Looks decently clean, especially for 300K. It's really clean. Yeah, y'all, so y'all be seeing that soon. So, I'm here at my shop now. Things just came in. That is, if you read it, these are the 15 mil spacers right here. So I got these ones because these are the proper way to do it. You actually take these, you put these over the lug nuts, these nuts that are on the actual studs right here, go to the lug, to the lug stud, the studs on the car. You thread lock them, you torque them down. I have to look up what they go to because I don't think it has it in here, what the torque spec is. From there, then you can put the wheel on these studs, and then this bore is made for the Toyota one, so I'll put my ring over it, and then it'll fit my wheels. The reason I'm doing this is to get more clearance in the wheel well, so that when the, so this is it, looking at the front of the car, the wheels are gonna turn, they turn about here right now, right? They're gonna turn to about here now. So, that means that this outside of the wheel is going to touch the inner fender like you guys saw the little piece that I showed you where the paint was gone. So these are going to allow more clearance. The only issue with these is because they're putting the wheel further out, it's more likely that the end of the wheel on this side is going to touch the fenders, so the front bumper and the, the fender on the side. Also when it's hitting weight on the ground and it, you know it's, it's drooping the suspension, I may hit the fender, the top of the fender, with the wheel. That's something that I'm just gonna have to deal with. I'm gonna have to roll the fenders more and hope for the best. These are the 15 mil. Uh, I don't know if these are gonna be the magic touch. I'm hoping that they are. I have the 25 mil. Here's the 25 mil. Much thicker. It's almost double, but it's not double. So this is the 15 mil. Let me see if I can pick them up next to that. Some of these guys on the S chassis, they run like, I wanna say two or three inch spacers, which is crazy, that's 50 to 75 mil. I don't know about three, I, I know for two for sure. But they run some fat spacers so that they can tilt the wheel full lock. And I don't wanna go that route, I hope I don't have to. I'm gonna get a higher offset wheel and a thinner wheel eventually, but to be honest with you, that's the last thing I'm worried about. These were 100 bucks for both, and they're decent. I'll deal with this any day of the week versus spending a whole other $1,200 on wheels and hoping that they fit properly. I'm thinking about doing, if you know, you probably already know what this wheel is if you know these specs. I'm thinking about doing a 18 by nine or a 19 by nine plus 12. I believe that's what they have. And then I'll do a 19 if I can, I might do a 19. If, oh yeah, it'll be 19, 10 and a half plus 12 in the rear, I believe. And that's just so I can get the width for the Y-body and everything like that.
like that. And I believe I can get a tight enough tire on there where I can actually still spin them. So I'm running 235 on my 18, 10 and a half. So that means I could, should be able to get a 235, 35 on my, I mean, excuse me, 235, 40. I have seen them do that on 19, 10 and a half, so now I'm trying to do that. 235, 40 on my 19, 10 and a half if I get them. Unless this works, then this will work for a while. I guess we'll talk about the wear and tear on this. I'm not advising you guys to do this. I'm just documenting my stuff. I want this to be public information so that people who have SCs, they can decide whether or not they want to do this and do this setup because this is relatively cheap. To go and get your rims, you get a really aggressive offset rim. Mine's plus 15, for example, and then do a plus 15 mil spacer and a plus 20 or a plus 25 spacer for 60 or 40 bucks, and then another $500 for the angle kit. I know, it's adding up, but you're gonna buy rims, so it's really just you angle kit and spacer, which is about $550, $600, and you're gonna be able to spin the car and actually not spin out, and actually be able to go to the event and really go lock to lock. That's not a bad price. Granted, you do have to do a whole a bunch of other mods, like bushings and things like that, but that's up to you and your decision. Change of plans. As you can see, the car is in the shop. Ron saved the day once again. Like I told you guys last time we did the exhaust, he made me do it. Now he's making me do this. He ain't making me do it, but he got me some motivation. So got some thread locker, we got some string, we got the stuff for it. We got the spacers to try it out. So I'm gonna set up the tie rods, get all that stuff on. The reason I got strings and stuff like that so that I can set up these jack stands, put string on it and try to give the toe the best way I can align it, you know, by eye so that it's not terrible. Honestly, we might go there and it might need like a slight adjustment. So fingers crossed, Ron will do it tomorrow. If we get the chance, if we don't, it is what it is. We'll have it at least somewhat dialed in and set up. So I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm going to start cracking away at this, put the tripod set up and put a time lapse on and get going. So doing a tie rod now, I'm going to remove this one. I got to take, I just took, he took the carbon out. I gotta take this bolt off and then I gotta hammer this and it's gonna release this outer tie rod. Then I gotta spin this outer tie rod off and install the angle kit piece on here that converts the, the tie rod insert so that I can change the axis at which the tie rod touches the knuckle so that it can change the steering angle. So you're just gonna see me working for a moment. It's literally unbolting this, hammering it off, then twisting this off and then bolting up the angle kit and then attaching the tie rod to this so that it can be all set. Also, I'll try to remember to get into that too because you gotta thread lock pretty much everything. And the reason for that is just gonna be a lot of shake and you know, this is gonna see a lot more excessive wear than the normal tie rod would see. So let me just jump into it and get crack -a So, as you can see, the knuckle is now completely out. So, this is what I was talking about with full lock. I don't think it's gonna be here because I don't, I don't know, we'll see. I don't know how far this thing goes, but I'm assuming it's not gonna go this far out. If it does go this far out, that's awesome, but I don't think it's gonna go this far out. So, inside here, the rim is going to, there's the control arm and it's going to touch there. So that's why I got the spacer to try to test that and see how far out it needs to go. Because if it hits, it's going to start snapping stuff up that we don't want to snap. Whether it breaks the control arm or it nicks the rim and then the rim's all roly oly poly. Uh, it could break the inner tie rod. It could break the tie rod. This is the new one. So that's the reason that I'm trying to get the spacer right. So I'm about to put this adapter on first. I'm going to take this piece off. And then I'll put the adapter on, thread lock everything, everything all set up. And then from there, we'll put the wheel on with the spacer and see where it wants to sit at without even putting the angle kit on yet, like attaching the tie rod, but we'll have this on. And then from there, oh, I'm dropping stuff. From there, we'll be able to see what spacer we do or don't need and then move on from there. So I'm just gonna show me putting this on and then we'll get into that. Here now, I just sanded this out inside here. 
So this kit comes with a little washer. So it goes, this bolt goes through here with the washer. We had to cut the inside of here. This is the brake dust shield. This is already cut. I just have to trim it some more. So it's not the end of the world for me. What I'm doing right now is I'm taking this one apart first, doing this one first. We're keeping the other side together because it already comes together. So the one that is closer to this side is gonna be more angle. So we want more angle. Oh, excuse me, backwards. Still closer to that side, more angle. Put that in there. So that bolt goes in first, then this bolt goes in here, then this goes on top of here. Boom, try again. There we go, ta-da. Now, so that you don't have to hold this, this washer stays on the actual, this bolt. This bolt goes over top. And then it screws into the other side. If I can get it to bolt in. I'm gonna kind of blind you guys right for a second, all right? So now that's in. Now, I recommend thread locking that. You're gonna tighten this down, I recommend thread locking that, and I recommend thread locking this. So I'm gonna about, I'm about to back this one out and do all of that, and then I'll show you guys all that stuff after. But once again, so this stuff goes to that. This is the washer for this. This has a nut and bolt, and, a, and then this is the bolt, this is the nut, this is the washer. Washer goes over top, thread locker down here, then you tighten this on, and then there's a cotter pin hole, put that through the, co the cotter pin through that, and then you're good to go on this side. And again, thread lock this as well, screw this in, thread lock this as well. I'm gonna do all that, and then I'll show you guys me trying on the spacers and trying to get this wheel to fit. I thread locked everything. This one I got to 30 foot pounds. Supposedly, I think this calls 30 foot pounds. Do not quote me on this, do your research. This is supposedly either 60 or 65, and this is either 60 or 65. I did this one to 70. I'm gonna do this one to 70 because these are big boy bolts. I know they could take it. So these are all good. Uh, this is through. The only thing that I did forget that I should mention is when you put yours in, make sure that you twist this so that the cotter pin is facing this way because it's facing towards my rotor. It's not the end of the world, but it will be much better in a place like facing this and this. And something else I want to be clear about is Yes, I said thread locker everything, but you're not thread lockering these pieces right here. So this, that bolts to this and that. Do not thread locker these because if you thread locker those, your lineman guy is going to have a bad day and he's going to be angry. We have locking nuts for those. So you do not need to thread locker this or this. We're just thread locking everything that's attached to where the tie rod goes. So this has to go on first. That has to go above this. So make sure that both of these are actually in the hive joint because if not, They'll be jiggling around and that's not good. This goes on first, put that in there. Again, if you have a friend, this makes it easier. So have your friend hold that washer and move this. And then you kind of have to move these, play with these, you see how it moves up and down. And then move those so that they work with that. Once it goes in, you see how it goes right in. Now your washers go next. Big boy washer first, then this washer, and then get your bolt. Now, just start it, right? The reason I say just start it is because what you're gonna do is you're gonna let these washers fall a little bit, and then you're gonna put thread locker on that. You can, you might have to put it on first. No, it works. So I'm gonna put thread locker on that now. Then I'm gonna bolt this up, and just like I said, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do 70 foot pounds. Y'all should look up at the website what it actually is because I'm an animal thug and I don't care. I did this one to 70, I'm gonna do this one to 70, and I did this one to 30, and I just kind of torqued this one to whatever I wanted with some uh, old Dugga Dugga style because I wasn't sure. I'm gonna do that. Last but not least, don't forget, cotter pins, one here, one down here, and then, you know, you gotta get your stuff aligned. So I'm gonna eyeball align mine with the string. I'm about to do the other side so that I can just hurry up and get it done. I'm not gonna film any of that. And then I'll jump into me doing the string and checking for clearance with these spacers. So at full lock, this is what it looks like. It's not set yet, guys. It's gonna have less toe than this. I'm going down, we're gonna feel the jack chain down. Now, here's the catch, and this isn't even, oh, technically it should work compressed, 
when it's, it shouldn't touch, but Dude, go ahead. Be on my yeah, so show them. Go the other way. This is a lot angle, guys. So as you can see, it touches the bumper. So that might be a clearance issue, but it's not compressed yet. So it may or not, may not be. Now, my only issue with this, and this isn't even full compression, guys. This is just um, semi-compression, and once it gets all the way in the ground, it'll actually do full compression. All right, it's gonna do funky stuff again. Alright, so I am touching, I'm definitely going to be touching here. It's not actually touching, I can stick my finger between there, but it's definitely going to be rubbing. So I'm worried about full lock that way on the front of the tire. But that is what it looks like, full lock that way. You can't even really tell from this angle. I'll show you guys when it's actually on the ground. But this is full lock the other way. It is touching my pad. Let me see. I know this is dangerous. It's not actually touching. But, I mean, considering these are soft springs, and if I hit a bump, it's definitely going to be touching. All right. So, 15 mil in. I think 15 will be fine. Should we try? I guess we might as well try 25. 25 we're on the other side. We're going to try 25 the other side. I'm not going to show you guys that. I'm just going to test it myself. And then from there, I'll show you guys everything once the car is in the ground and the toe is set. So part of the reasons that I didn't want to do it today happened. So now, it's a silly one. This Everything else is good. Everything's good. We had to do 25 mil because when it's on the ground, it is touching, but it isn't touching the bumper and it didn't touch the fender when it's on 25 mil full lock to lock. It's also not all the way towed in, which is good because that means that it was further out. That's something I didn't compensate for. I might've been able to get away with 15 mil. Carlito says hi. So, I mean, I'm doing the 25 mil to be safe with the control arms. I'd rather bend a fender than break a control arm. 25 mil, it is gonna put more stress in hubs and everything like that, but it just is what it is. It's safer. It's going to have a better space for the when it's full lock on the wheel. It's going to look better technically because it's going to be mad aggressive. I got to roll the fender some more. I'm going to raise the car some more. And then I'm going to tow it in to eyeball. And then hopefully, I was going to do the string thing, but I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do the string thing. I think I'm just going to try to bang this out and then we're going to align it tomorrow. So, anyways, I'm going to get back to work. I'm going to try to fight that other wheel back on. And then from there, I'll show you guys the finished product. lock to lock holy moly so that's lock to lock on this side you can see in there and all that I know it's a little dark but yeah so this looks way better way more angle it's still not as much as I would have thought to be honest with you but it's pretty crazy so tomorrow hopefully I get aligned and then go from there so I just went got food I know I still look crazy. Right now I'm sitting in the car. I'm about to wash the car so I get you guys a little bit of B-roll. I'm not gonna really rinse. I'm probably gonna rinse the car. I'm not gonna actually wash it. You know, try to wash the rims. It's doing pretty good. The front end is really high up. Now I want this, but my fitment is not the best. The only other problem is now I lost all my camber in the front, which we actually want camber in the front because when you're tilting lock to lock. If you're tilting, the way that your wheel is turned, it makes it roll over this way. So when you have camber, it bounces that out and the guiding wheel will be flat. So you'll get more traction in the front. So I have to put more camber in. I don't know if we're gonna do that tomorrow. I think I'm just gonna set toe. The car driving, amazing. I love it. Everything is good. This is with the eyeball alignment. I haven't even done the alignment yet. So you guys might have a different clip tomorrow. Yeah, so I'm gonna get to cleaning.
I did notice, and I actually smelled it when I came in the curve. I'm rubbing tire on the front here. It is a little bit, you can see a little bit right there, that fresh black line. But that was from, I was sending it full speed into a corner and it was pressuring on that corner. So I am hoping that it should be all right. Hopefully the camber bolts are not too crazy so that I can have them adjust the camber tomorrow. But yes, she's looking good. She's nice and clean. I know it's gonna water spot and all that, but this paint isn't the best. I really don't care. There's a whole lot of poke, as you can see. I could care less. I mean, yes, it looks cool, but the main reason is to get the car to work. Yes, there's a lot of poke. It's probably going to rub some more. I need to lower this one slightly because it's sitting a little bit higher. Maybe I'll heighten the other one a little more because it is slightly, slightly higher, but I think it's from, like I said, from me hitting that corner and getting the pressure on that one. So if I could get the pressure on this one, this one should settle a little more. Maybe I should go find a curve just that tight and do it that way. But, oh, I do know a curve that tight. Yeah, so maybe we'll try that. But anyways, I'm just gonna do some casual B-roll. It's not gonna be anything crazy. So yes, I know the front camber is not like the rear and it's also not enough for drift stuff, but it is what it is. So, drove the car, everything went great. The car is starting to settle on the suspension, everything's good and all that, right? And I drove all over the place. I'm about 30 minutes away from home. And, you know, having fun, driving the car. As you can hear, you know, there's cars flying by me right now because I'm on a highway. Bro, the transmission gave out. So now I'm stuck on the side of the highway waiting for a tow. Wow, what a week. I guess I'm dropping a transmission. I'm assuming that's what it is. Everything runs, but then when you, you know, because it's clutched out, it stops moving the trans, stuff jiggles around and it gets caught and then it stalls the car because the trans doesn't want to move freely. So now I'm hoping that it is a trans and it didn't grenade or break anything else. It seems like it's fine. But the angle kit and everything, everything fits. Uh, I did the, this is still on the regular eyeball alignment and it's doing great. I got things to settle in. I got things to like fall. I think I did touch my um, windshield wiper thingies because when I was driving and I'd hit certain bumps, the windshield wipers would go off on their own. So I think I messed up one of those clips. So I gotta fix that. But more importantly, I need to get a transmission. Uh, I'm thinking it probably let out a lot of the fluid and then you know it was just hot and it just finally gave out because it just sounded like it grenaded and pieces were in there. And then it got caught and the car just cut out. So, to be updated, waiting for the tow, and then I guess I'll get back to you guys and I'll figure that out.